Okay, so let's uh, let's pray. And I just want us to pray in this spirit, right? Praying, pray in tongues. And I realize that, uh, like some of us might be there, uh, you might, uh, you know, have that personal space. Uh, you might be, uh, you know, having some privacy, and maybe you can pray out loud and in, in tongues. And and maybe some of us cannot have that, uh, you know, that privacy. But so you can just pray softly, just between yourself and the Lord, as we see in one Corinthians fourteen. Uh, but I just want us to pray, right? Uh, let's let's spend some time. Let's take some time to just pray in tongues, pray in the spirit. Uh, yeah, let's start. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this amazing, wonderful gift of uh, praying in the spirit. Lord, we thank you that we pray the perfect prayer, even as we do so. We thank you that we are being edified, even as we do so. God, we thank you that, uh, Lord, um, even when at times when we do not know what we should pray for, as we ought. You make intercession for us. We thank you. We thank you that we speak uh, wonderful works, Lord. Your wonderful works, your amazing works, when we pray in the Spirit. So, God, we thank you, and and we do that. We choose to do that this morning. Yes, Lord, come, Lord, and all these aspects of the praying in the Spirit, speaking the mysteries of God, being edified in the inner man. Lord, let it happen to us right now, Lord, as we choose to intentionally pray in the Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Shimon King, the Rosipere, 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 Here it may be in the air, most of 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 the air, most Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. Thank you. We worship you. Thank you. We bless your name. We bless your name, God. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you for this day, God. We, um, Each one of us, Lord, we commit ourselves into your mighty hands, God. We thank you for your indwelling presence, upon, and we thank you for your presence upon us, Lord, your anointing, O oh God. And um, we just pray that uh, today, God, that you will lead us into all that you have for us, Lord, even as we look into your word. We want to give you all praise. We want to give you all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. And then, okay. Um, yeah, I think I know that was a very short time of uh, prayer, but I just want to encourage you to, you know, pray uh, extended times, and you can pray uh, whenever, you know, when you're maybe you're you're working on something, maybe you're doing some other thing, you know, maybe you're going for a walk, um, maybe you're commuting to work you know, traveling by bus or, you know, whatever vehicle, um, you can pray in tongues, pray in the spirit. And uh, Paul says that he prayed in tongues more than anyone else. And uh, 
you know uh, when he's talking to the Corinthian church right so he prayed a lot in in the spirit in tongues and a lot a lot of strength uh, you know, he could do accomplish so much in ministry. I'm not saying that that is only because of praying in tongues, but uh, you know, one of the one of the things that we see, one of the factors that we see, or the key that we see, is that he prayed much in the spirit, right? And uh, yeah, so we have that as an example. So let's uh, let's do that. Okay, um, let's um, continue from where we uh, stopped last class. Uh, we we were looking at. Um, we looked at baptism of the Holy Spirit, and last class we looked at the gifts of the Spirit, and we were looking at some of the foundations, right, for for the uh, gifts of the Spirit. Um, foundations meaning, you know, these are some things that we need to consider when we when we look at gifts of the Spirit overall in general. We see that they are for all believers; that all the gifts are for all the believers, and uh, and what they do, and so on, right. And we also looked at, um, you know, for the purpose of study, uh, categorizing these gifts as uh, uh, as vocal gifts, as power gifts, uh, and so on. Right? Um, gifts that uh, uh, we looked at those three categories. Right? Let me just go over that again. Uh, we looked at uh, um, just a very quick thing. Yeah, we looked at vocal gifts. We looked at revelation gifts, revelatory gifts, and we also looked at uh, power gifts, right? And uh, yes, it's for the purpose of uh, study so that we can uh, learn. And uh, but we also know that you know the gifts actually function. Um, there'll be overlap. There'll be um, you know gifts flowing together. So you know it's it's just for the purpose of study that we looked at that. Okay. Um, so today we look at another gift. Last class, I think we ended by looking at the gift of tongues and uh, and the benefits of uh, praying in tongues and so on. So today let's look at uh, another gift, which is the interpretation of tongues. Right. I'm just going to um, uh, share the notes, project the notes, so you can follow through. Okay. Um, okay, you can see that, right? Okay. So the gift of interpretation of tongues, right? So um, just uh, so we see this also uh, as one of the gifts gifts that are, are listed in one the the listing that is given for us in one Corinthians twelve. Um, uh, verses 7 to 11 onwards, we see uh, interpretation of tongues also mentioned as one of the uh, vocal gifts, right? So um, so what is interpretation of tongues? So we know that uh, by definition, interpretation means it's, it's the act of explaining or giving meaning to something, meaning of something. Right? Um, interpretation is, um, so it's a supernatural ability that the Holy Spirit gives um, the uh, a, a believer to um, whenever we pray in tongues or when someone else prays in tongues to give an interpretation of that, a meaning of those words. Now, um, so it can be when when we ourselves are praying, or it can be when others are praying. Um, one thing that we need to understand is that is it's an interpretation, meaning it it is uh, first of all it is it is a supernatural ability. It's not an acquired uh, skill. It's not that you learn the language, right? So it's a supernatural ability. Secondly, we see that it is um, it is some it is interpretation, meaning it is not word for word translation. Right, it is interpretation, which means the essence of the meaning of what was prayed in tongues or what was um, uh, spoken in tongues. So it could be, um, uh, it'll be just a gist or an essence of the meaning of what was prayed or spoken in tongues. Right, uh, and in some cases, it could also be the um, understanding of a language which you have not learned. It could be, an, like you said, you know, tongues is earthly language or a heavenly language, uh, which is being uh, prayed or spoken. So it could be, even though we have not learned that language, it could be the interpretation of that language. You understand the meaning of it, right? So uh, that is interpretation of tongues. So uh, because it is interpretation, uh, well, when, we, when someone prays, maybe the, the time taken to 
to pray, you know, maybe they pray two or three sentences in tongues. Now, the interpretation need not be two or three sentences, right? It can be a, a short phrase. It can be, uh, you know, uh, much shorter than the time taken to pray itself because it is the interpretation. It is the gist or the essence of the meaning of what was prayed. Okay. Um, okay. So in the Old Testament, do we have examples? Okay, uh, because uh, of course we see this very specifically in the New Testament. In when Paul writes about uh, the gifts to the Corinthian church, but in the Old Testament, do we see any examples there? Well, we we see uh, an indirect reference in the sense we when we when we study Daniel chapter five, and Daniel is there in Belshazzar's court, um, and and uh, is a Chaldean a king. And um, uh, he's there. He, they've brought the vessels um, from the temple, and they are using it uh, to, you know, drink. And uh, they are, uh, and and then all kinds of things are happening there. You know, they are having basically, it's a, it's a lot of revelry. Everything's happening there. And some suddenly, there's a hand which comes and starts writing on the wall. Okay, now. Uh, they don't understand what is being written. They don't. Uh, they don't know the language. It seems to be a, a, a language which they don't understand. And also, obviously, they don't know the what is written. They don't know the meaning of what is written. So, um, so someone calls Daniel. So Daniel comes, and Daniel sees the handwriting. He 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 interprets. Right. This is what is written. He, in fact, he, he he says this is what is written. You know, the, he uh, recounts those um, the language itself, and he gives the interpretation. This is the meaning of it. Right? So, um, so it was something that was written, not something that was spoken. That Daniel actually uh, identified and interpreted. Okay, uh, and we uh, we know that interpretation comes from the Lord. You know, Joseph says, you know, uh, and also Daniel that uh, it is the Holy, it is God Himself who gives the interpretation. Right. So. Um, so Daniel interprets that. So we see that reference. It's though it's not an indirect reference of tongues, but it's a, it's a, it's a script, uh, an unknown script which they did not know. So Daniel read that out. Daniel also interpreted, uh, interpreted that. Right. So in the New Testament, of course, as part of the list of the nine gifts, one of that is interpretation of gifts, which is listed in one Corinthians twelve. And uh, the uses of it is also mentioned there. Uh, uses of the gifts in general mentioned in 12, 13, and 14. Okay. Now, when we look at um, interpretation of gifts, uh, interpretation of tongues, sorry, you know, uh, we see that we can, it, it can be, uh, you, it can be um, when we, uh, this, this gift can be operational uh, for us personally, you know, just like how when we pray in tongues, we edify ourselves, right? So for personal use, when we are in times of prayer uh, and uh, it's just you alone with God and you're praying in tongues, you can ask the Lord for interpretation of what you are praying, right? Uh, so how does it help us? How does it help when you're praying and you ask the Lord for interpretation? And, you know, how can, how can it help us? One thing is that it can help us personally for guidance or, you know, some direction that we need to uh, go into, right? So personal guidance, maybe we don't know certain things, maybe we are asking the Lord for, you know, uh, maybe we need to make certain decisions. Uh, it could be, it could be anything. It need not be just ministry, ministerial decisions, but it could be in life, um, maybe some choices that some some hard choices that need to be made and you're praying in tongues because you know that praying in tongues you're praying the perfect will of god right we see that this holy spirit uh, knows the mind of the uh, 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 mind of god and prays that makes intercession for us so it's a it's 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 wonderful to to pray that and you you're at that crossroad you don't know what we should pray for and uh, we can pray in tongues so you pray that now uh, for us personally, you know, if if we know the meaning of it, if we get the uh, the uh, meaning of what we are praying, then we can actually follow through with action. So uh, we can we can take that step, right? Even as we pray in tongues, so we can ask the Lord for interpretation and say, "Okay, God, you know, I'm praying now. Uh, I just want you to." give me the meaning of what I'm praying because the Holy Spirit is praying that prayer and the answers also will come, right? Um, secondly, 
maybe it, it is to do with decisions again you know uh, some things for which we are responsible work uh, maybe it's the business or maybe it's a ministry some decisions that need to be made right we can we can pray and ask the lord for interpretation um revelation insight into um the things of god maybe uh, it's something to do with the word maybe uh, the word of god and uh, we need uh, revelation and insight we need uh, a deeper understanding of the word then also we can pray in tongues and ask the lord for interpretation right and uh, sometimes creative ideas uh, uh, strategy strategic uh, uh, plans and so on we can pray and ask for interpretation okay um so that is for our personal use we'll we'll come into you know how do we uh, how do we receive interpretation so we are coming to that okay but uh, we just kind of laying out oh, these are the uses of it these are the ways in which this this gift um you know uh, can manifest right the, this this gift can benefit um the one who is praying right um tongues and interpretation when ministering to a congregation okay now how does that help the congregation um we know that uh, similarly you know uh, as we looked at the gift of tongues in the same manner that um, when we pray in tongues we are edified but when there is interpretation the congregation is edified collectively the church the fellowship the congregation is edified built up why because they receive the meaning of what was prayed or what was spoken in tongues right so um so it can have um when let's say we are praying and uh, suddenly there is an utterance uh, uh to pray that out speak that out in tongues so is it is another way by which um it can be intercession or it also it can be a, a prophetic utterance which can come in tongues and um there is the interpretation of it so that the church also receives the edification right so uh so but we need to understand we need to keep in mind where in mind that uh, if there is a, a utterance or a in tongues to a, a congregation to the public and in public then we need to pray for interpretation otherwise we can just pray to uh, you know our, ourselves between ourselves and god right so um so that is something that we need to keep in mind okay so how is um, the interpretation of tongues how is it um, how is it received okay now that's the that's a key question right um how is it received like all the other gifts you know uh we see in the in the book of galatians um the paul writes and he he talks about the gifts and he says you know how did you receive these gifts or how did you work in these gifts um is it not by faith right uh, galatians 3 and verse 2 he says did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith so which is which means that uh, the works of the spirit um the works of the holy spirit is um is received by faith right and um yeah the question from divya can we say that tongues that are interpreted are also prophecies yeah in some cases in some cases it can be just uh, you know it is a uh, you know it can be a uh, when we say prophecy we're going to look at it in the next topic so when we look at prophecy it, is, it can be something that is edifying that something that brings comfort something that is encouraging right uh, and uh, it could also be something that is directed at one person or or a group so yes uh, it, it, when we say uh, when when there is interpretation of tongues it can prophecy can work that way also right or it can be um, a, a, a for intercession as well like you're praying for something and it is uh, an inspired prayer you know like a prophetic prayer and you're praying for a church praying for a Uh, you know a believer and there is also interpretation right and uh, and also um, so this is collectively we're talking about but when personally when we say um yeah um uh, so collective i mean personally when we say uh, it is for our personal edification personal direction um you know revelation of uh, god's word a deep understanding of god's word and so on okay um hope that helps the yeah so robert um who was the first person to speak in tongues in india and where did it happen well i really don't know robert that question i i'm not sure if anybody recorded that um 
So I'm not sure. But we know, um, you know, St. Thomas came to India uh, and he ministered in India. And uh, and we also know, you know, the, the well, the uh, when we looked at the book of Acts, we saw that Peter, John, uh, the apostle Paul, when they went and um, ministered, they ministered the gospel, but they also, they just did not stop uh, with that, right? They, they led people in, uh, you know, praying for the Holy Spirit, baptism of the Holy Spirit and so on. So, well, it could be anywhere, right? It could be the, the you know, uh, wherever he ministered and, uh, and so on. So, we don't know. But when you study revival, um, revivals and visitations, uh, church history, we see that uh, you know there were certain moves of God in Punjab. We see the moves of God in Pandit Ramabai's uh, Mukti Mission. Uh, we see there's uh, you know like a, uh, a wave of the outpouring of the Spirit. Um, so we see you know all those things happening. But of course, these are, these are much later, right? Uh, so yeah, so it could be accompanying that, right? Okay. So how is uh, you know interpretation of tongues received? You know, that's uh, I think that's that's a burning question. You know, that's a very important uh, question. Uh, so one thing to understand is, of course, by faith. Okay, so you take the step of faith. Secondly, uh, we are sensitive to uh, our uh, our you know this. Uh, I mean, in the sense we are we are mindful of our spirit sense. Right? We saw that uh, just like how we have our physical senses of seeing, hearing, uh, feeling, and tasting, and smelling, uh, touch, and so on, we we see that the whole, when when God speaks to us, He speaks to us in our spirit, right? Uh, and we hear in the spirit, we uh, feel in the spirit. There are emotions that we feel in the spirit, and uh, and so on, right? That we could feel the weight of certain things in the spirit, in the inner man. So interpretation also in the same manner, because we know that God speaks to us in these ways. So interpretation also by inference, we can conclude that we receive it in the same manner, right? So uh, we receive it in the spirit. So so how does it happen? So you we pray in tongues, uh, maybe we're praying in tongues for some time, and then uh, we ask the Lord, you know, so this is this is where faith comes in, right? So we ask the Lord, we believe that the Lord who, the Holy Spirit who gave us the, the, the words to utter in tongues will also give us the interpretation of that. And so uh, we take a step of faith and we perceive in our spirit, Lord, what are you? putting in my spirit is it a is it something that is quickening are you maybe your quickening scripture maybe there are certain words that are coming in my spirit um, so you speak that out in the language that you know you know whether it's english or whether it's hindi or whatever your language so you speak that out and that's how interpretation of tongues works right so it could be a word it could be a phrase it could be uh, maybe some you know pictorial things that you're seeing but then you speak that out and um, and practically, practically, that's how uh, interpretation of tongues uh, would work because that is how we hear in the spirit. Okay, so that is about uh, interpretation of tongues. So we looked at tongues, we looked at uh, interpretation of tongues. Okay, so just want to ask uh, us, you know, um, has anybody, um, you know, moved in that? You know, interpretation of tongues. Have you had an experience of, um, you know, in uh, interpretation of tongues so far maybe you can share that um, okay okay so um, not yet yeah I think that's a good response not yet you know so you, you can we can ask now you know uh, we can ask the Lord to give us interpretation of tongues and we can pray in tongues right so um, Okay, so why don't we do that? You know, take a couple of minutes to do that. No pressure, but we're just getting into the habit of it. Um, okay, interpretation of... Let me just answer this question. Elisha has a question. How is interpretation of tongues different uh, from interpretation of other tongues? Well, 
the usage is the same, um, Elisha, you know, in the sense, um, it is a spiritual gift. It's a spiritual um, a gift. So which means it is something that is given by the Holy Spirit. The meaning, the, the, the gist of the meaning is given by the Holy Spirit, is uh, communicated by the Holy Spirit to our spirit. So, so that is how it is. But when we say interpretation of other tongues, um, are you talking about, you know, let's say, um, let's say, you know, you speak in Swahili and I, I kind of translate that or interpret that in English. It, it, uh, can you just um, kind of clarify that question, please? So we can. Yeah, we can... Uh, as far if, uh, uh, I think, uh, as, as you talk to, um, scripture records that they spoke in other tongues. And um, the, the people who have gathered that day around uh, Jerusalem could hear their native language being spoken. So uh, tongues is tongues and the interpretation of tongues. Yes, as you have rightly said, I understand the other tongues mean other language, other known language which is being spoken by another and me having the understanding I'm able to interpret say the person speaks French and because I am able to understand or I understand French I am able to interpret it and I don't think that requires any supernatural ability with that uh, your knowledge of the language can help you do the interpretation. So I wanted a clarification on that. Is it always that the interpretation of other tongues requires a supernatural ability? Mm. Yeah. So, um, so the thing is, uh, if it's a known language, you know, when, when we okay, uh, first of all, when we say um, uh, uh, when we say tongues or other tongues, uh, we are also talking about uh, you know both you know uh, uh, earthly language and heavenly language. Right when we say uh, the gift of tongues, um, so so as a person, I have not learned this, um, uh, you know, in a in the natural method, but uh, I speak it out as the Holy Spirit gives me utterance. So it could be a you know known language. I mean, it would be an earthly language, something that that I do not know. Right. So when it comes to interpretation, of course, there are some languages that we know. Maybe we know two or three languages, and then we you know. When somebody speaks, we interpret it. So we, there's no, um, there's no, uh, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit's, uh, you know, impartation there, or uh, we don't. Um, so th th we don't call that as interpretation of tongues, right? So it's just, uh, you know, you know it already. You you know the language and you interpret it. Uh, but here, but here in this case, um, when we interpret, when you say interpretation of tongues, it could also be an earthly language. That is, that's the other thing. You know, when we uh, maybe someone is speaking. And uh, the Holy Spirit illuminates or gives us understanding of that language, and then you you know it, right? Um, and you 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 perfectly understand it, but you don't know that. So it's it's a supernatural work. Right? So that is also uh, interpretation of tongues. I think that was your question, right? So that is also interpretation of tongues. But um, uh, well, uh, do we see a biblical precedent? I'm I'm not sure if uh, any worse there. Uh, but I've heard of people, you know, uh, giving, testifying and saying that they, uh, this was, uh, they, uh, you know, they had a perfect understanding. They knew exactly what they, and then they responded to that person. And it was, you know, what that person needed to hear, right? Uh, it was a response to that particular question, uh, whatever, you know, they were trying to convey and they had perfect understanding of it. And which was by the, uh, it it could it was a supernatural work. It was not a you can't explain it any other way. Yeah. Um, ah, so uh, translation rather than interpretation when the language being spoken is known in the natural. Um, so not necessarily. You know, translation would be word for word. But when you get at the essence of what was said, you know, maybe you ask like. Uh, you know, you you speak for about maybe two minutes or three minutes, but I get the essence of what you said, right? Uh, I don't know your language, but then I get the essence of what you actually 
uh, speak or you spoke, then that that would be interpretation. Translation would be, you know, every line that you spoke, every line that you maybe wrote down. I, you know, I know it word for word. You know, that would be translation, right? But interpretation would be uh, uh, just a summary of it. Yeah, so that would be a basic difference of translation and interpretation. So when we say interpretation of tongues, it's it's not that, you know, phrase by phrase or word by word, but it's a thing. You know, I like... Um, there's this uh, person, um, you know. Uh, before I came, before I came into ministry, the Lord used this person to speak into my life. You know, I actually called this lady to. She's an intercessor, so I called this lady to uh, share a prayer point. You know, my uncle was actually um, undergoing a surgery. You know, suddenly, uh, it was a heart surgery, and so um, and uh, so it was all of a sudden he was he was he was uh, pretty young then so i called her to you know say you know my uncle is going through the surgery and uh, and so please pray that everything will go well and so on so she started she said okay i'll pray on the phone i'll pray for you and and the thing is uh, so when she prayed she was of course uh, praying in uh, in the language and then uh, started praying in tongues and uh, um so when she prayed in tongues she was actually she started prophesying over me right she said uh, you know this is what the lord is calling you to do you know it was quite a surprise at that time um this is what the lord has called you he's called you to be a minister etc uh, but um when you um you know when she was when we when she was conveying this it was uh, you know she would pray in the spirit and she would convey you know in the known language okay so praying in the spirit well, it the time would vary. You know, it, it was either you know maybe it was a long time, and then she would convey this, or it was a short time, and she would convey this. So it was a you know it, it's an alternating you know a kind of a thing like where she'd pray in tongues, uh, you know, say this is what the Lord is saying, calling you. This is what the Lord is uh, going to do in your life. Pray in tongues um, and do that. So it was like a, a prophecy which was coming through interpretation of tongues. Um, so. So in that case, also, you know, I, I, so I got to, you know, experience firsthand the, the interpretation of tongues, and um, now even when she's praying over people, this is what would happen. She would pray in tongues and then pray. You no, know, this is what the Lord is um, asking. This is what the Lord is calling, etc. Right? So, um, so we don't have to have that doubt about hey. This person prayed for such a long time in tongues, and then you know this person is giving one word or two words, you know, go, my son, or be blessed, my son. Uh, we don't have to worry about that because it is interpretation, right? Okay, right. So um, yeah, let's take a minute to do that. Okay. Um, so, so if there's anyone here and you've not yet started praying in tongues, okay, um, just want to encourage you. To uh, to take that step of faith, okay. Um, it is the Lord Jesus who baptizes in the Holy Spirit, and uh, He's a giver of good gifts. Uh, the if He asks for a bread, he, he won't give a stone, something substandard, something that that is actually going to hurt you. And if you ask for a fish, He's not going to give you a serpent or a scorpion. So, so you can be assured of that. That He's a good Father. He gives good gifts. Right? He's a good God gives good gifts to his children. Now, um, secondly, um, just want you to, it, it in, uh, so he's the baptizer, he's the giver. You need to take a step of faith. Faith is, uh, faith is taking a step of faith. Uh, it, it, it is a risk. Right? You believe and you, you receive and you take that step. So here, what does taking a step of faith mean? It, it would mean that you give voice to what the Holy Spirit is putting in your spirit. Okay, so um, many times we don't give voice to whatever utterance the Spirit of God is putting in our spirit because it doesn't make sense. If it doesn't make sense, how can I make, you know, we are used to speaking words that make sense. Right? If we don't understand, we don't speak it out. Like babies start by doing that, but when we when we learn a language, we, we speak out. We don't say you know some phrase that does not make sense. Like we don't say that. We always you know think and we speak words that make sense. So um, so that's the thing. So our mind fights it. 
right? So, but we need to take a step of faith and say, okay, I'm going to speak that out. This is what I sense in my spirit. This is what I feel like speaking out. Um, but I'm I'm going to take that step of faith. I'm going to make give utterance or uh, give voice to that sound or give sound to that whatever utterance I'm uh, receiving in my spirit. Okay. And thirdly, it is you who speaks. You know, the Holy Spirit will never force, uh, make you speak. No. It is, we take the step. Where Paul writes and he says, I will pray in tongues. I will sing in tongues. I will pray with the understanding. I will sing with the understanding. So it's it's always our will that is involved. It's a choice that we make. Okay, So we can take that choice, make that choice, and start praying. Okay, um, So for those of us who have never start, or yet to start praying in tongues, you can take that step and, you know, you can take this time to do that. For those of us who are all, already pray in tongues, now uh, your step of faith would be to receive in the spirit, you know, what is it, what is the meaning that the Lord is conveying? Okay. It could be just one thing, one simple thing. Um, I see Divya's question, you know, how can we know that the interpretation is correct? Okay. So, well, the test is always just like the test of prophecy, you know, is it something in line with the word of God? Is it something that contradicts the word of God? Is it something that, um, you know, uh, that that contradicts the nature and uh, the character of God? And, well, it could be something that that's nothing of that sort. In the sense, it passes all those tests, but still, can I... Is it my own emotions or is it God? You know, that's the thing. No, is it my own thoughts? Is it my own feelings or is it is it God? Is it me or is it God? Well, that we will come to know only as we walk with God, as we continue with uh, you know, continue in faith, right? as we grow in intimacy with God, and and the Holy Spirit gives us an you know a, a confirmation. He gives us a sense of peace. Uh, he gives us the assurance. Um, so so we will know. If it's prophecy, it is something that is, you know, blessing the person. That person says, hey, this is exactly what I wanted to hear. This is what was happening in my life, etc. So we can test it out that way. And if it's for our own lives, uh, you know, there are these answers, there are these strategies, there are these ideas that we test and try out. And and we know that, okay, it, oh, it's worked. And in hindsight, we see that, okay, this is how God has spoken, right? And we, we begin to increase that library. And God spoke, God did, and you have that testimony, you, you have that filed away. And, you know, you go on that path, right? you travel, you make that journey with God and walk with him. And you continue on that. You grow in that. You grow in the gift. Right? You grow in the uh, interpretation. You grow in the understanding. Um, so that's how we do it, um, uh, Divya. Right? Okay. Um, hmm. It does happen. Okay, that's wonderful. Really, truly, yeah. Just continue strong in it. Um, yeah. The thing is, not to give up. You know, discouraged. Not to give up. Um, not to compare with others. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God for that. Okay, let's take two minutes. Only two minutes. Okay, now it's nine. It's nine forty-three. Uh, we'll pray for two minutes, and then uh, after two minutes of praying in tongues, we will. We will also, you know, pray. Uh, perceive what. God has put in our hearts and make a note of it. Okay, so maybe if you have a pen and paper, you just write down, oh, this is what I'm sensing. Okay, and then um, let's see. Okay, I'm also going to do the same thing. Okay, let's pray. Let's pray in the spirit. Okay, I'm just going to mute the mic so that I can pray out loud. Okay. Yeah, all of us you know, uh, take that step. Just pray out in tongues, pray in the spirit. Be mindful of what the spirit of God is putting in your heart. Be mindful of pictures, be mindful of, uh, you know, uh, maybe a picture of someone you know, picture of whatever, you know. Be mindful of that. Be mindful of a scripture verse, scripture reference. Be mindful of something that you see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Testimonies, anything that while you prayed, anything that you sensed, anything that you saw, anything that you heard. Anyone wants to, you can even put it in the chat, right? Um, anyone? Okay, we're just testing things here, okay? We're not... Um, uh, so evaluation is something that we will do later, okay? We're just, we're just getting into the habit of hearing from God. We're just getting into the habit of, you know, receiving from Him. So we, you know, we say God is a God who speaks, right? Uh, in theory, we know that, right? We read in the Word and, and God speaks. But, but do we really believe, do we really know that God really speaks, you know? And as a shepherd... We are the sheep. We are privileged to hear the voice of the sheep. Right? We know that, um, yeah, he speaks. He's a sheep. We, but do we believe that? That That's the first step, right? Okay. So here we have him, Divya. I sense the Holy Spirit is a giver of all good gifts. Wonderful. I sense angels around me. Praise God. Okay, so verse is Rosalind. I was remembering Isaiah 43 1. Uh, though I know the scripture, yeah, so that's the thing, uh, Rosalind. Like, you know, uh, Holy Spirit, uh, He's the one who guides us into all truth. You know, the Lord Jesus, uh, John chapter 14, I think, when He's talking about the Holy Spirit, He says He will guide you into all truth and He'll also remind you of things that He's spoken. You know, let me just uh, uh, 14, John 14 and verse 26. Okay, um, so it says, um, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Right? So you read scripture, Holy Spirit has given you illumination about Isaiah 43, verse 1. So yes, that is first part of John chapter 14, 26. The second part of that is that you know he's reminding you. Right? 43, uh, verse 1. Uh, but now, thus says the Lord, uh, who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. Okay, so a reiteration of that. Um, praise God for that. Okay. Um, Divya was assured of God's presence. Yes. Um, Elisha, I saw an image of an inscription on a plant. Okay. The inscription is not in English, so I could not read. Right. You can continue to pray, ask the Lord. Um, the Lord will, you know, bring back something. Um, okay, so let, let me just share. I, I just saw a couple of things, two things really. Um, yeah, so one was um, I saw um, like something like a like a long highway, and I just felt the Lord saying, "Crooked paths made straight." You know, crooked paths will be made straight. Um, so that He's the one who's making it. You know, this seemed like a beautiful road, a lovely road, which you can, you know, just ride or drive. Very long, and the view was 
you know, uh, I could see in the distance, though it was like going like that and coming up, seeing the distance, crooked paths made straight. Um, and so he will, you know, uh, so the, the assurance that in life he'll make that. Um, so it, it could be for me, it could be for the group also. You know, anyone in the group, maybe you you feel that, you know, all these words which they are sharing, which people have put up here, uh, you know, it could be for, it could be for you personally. Right, and uh, maybe it's for you personally, but you, and we ask the Lord, you know, it could be for anyone also, right? So, so you can be uh, mindful of that. So you can take that for yourself, saying, God, you know, this is what you spoke. I receive it. So you can say, you know, I receive it, Lord. Um, okay. So that, that was second thing was, you know, I just saw a sprinkler, you know, uh, like a sprinkler in a lawn. You know, sprinkler system just uh, splashes water or sprinkles water and just keeps the lawn fresh and uh, green. Uh, but also, you know, uh, under that, uh, there was a leak, right? So it was like uh, there was a tube going there and there was a leak. So not enough water was being dispensed. You know, there was a leak. So I don't know if it's for me, you know, right? I need to fix the leak. So that was the message, fix the leak. Right? You, you are doing the sprinkling, but you know, there's some kind of a leak, which is, so I don't know if it's for me or if it's for anyone here also, or maybe it's for both, you know, fix the leak so that you can dispense water even more. What is a leak? Maybe it could be anything, you know, our attitude, our motives, things of the flesh, uh, unrenewed thinking. Uh, so we need to pray and ask the Lord. Okay. Um, sense and hear rivers flowing. And it reminded me of Ezekiel 47. Okay, Ezekiel 47, is it about the, the, the water, the river from the temple? Um, 47 and verse 3. Okay. Oh, uh, we're almost, uh, after this, we'll take a break. 47 verse 3. Yeah, right. So the water is coming up, flowing from the temple, ankle deep, knee deep, coming up to the waist and so on. Right. Okay. Okay, uh, Rosalind again, sensing God's presence, wonderful. Um, yeah, Isaac, praying the Spirit as a means of prayer. Maybe I never understood the importance. Now I need more support to be able to use the Spirit in prayer. Yeah, so, uh, you, know, you know, one way of doing it is to get together with another friend, uh, another believer who also prays in the Spirit. And, you know, you can take some time to do that. Um, that is one. Uh, secondly, if you're by yourself, uh, maybe you can just pray, play some worship music, you know, play some worship music in the background and maybe just walk around uh, just praying in, in the spirit, praying in tongues, singing in, in tongues, singing in the spirit. Right? You could do that um, and uh, yeah, continue to do that. Right? Um, there will be Isaiah 42, I will bring the blind, blind by a way they did not know. I will lead them in paths they have not known. I made darkness light before them and crooked plus straight. Oh, that was Isaiah 42, verse 16. Thank you. And not forsake them. Wonderful. Yeah, right. Right. Okay, so we'll take a break uh, and we'll come back at 10.03. I think we're 10 minutes, three minutes into the break. So we'll come back at 10.03. Uh, okay, thank you. <laughs> 